Hello, my name is Michael Lambert and today I want to talk a little bit about what I see as the uh, the upcoming demise of Boris Johnson. But uh, before I do that, if, if you haven't already subscribed, I'd be grateful if you wouldn't mind doing so. And if you approve of what I say, if you mind hitting the, uh, the, the like button, I'd appreciate that. Also, at the end of this video, I will read out one or two more gems of wisdom um, from the comments on, on, on my last week's video. Now, when you make uh, YouTube videos such as this, it's, it's probably wise not to make predictions. You're, you're, you're really uh, taking a risk if you do so. And I've been predicting the demise of uh, Boris Johnson for quite a long time, uh, for various reasons. Um, I think I've thought all along there are three very good reasons why he should never be Prime Minister. Uh, the first being that he's um, dishonest, the whole world knows that he's a, he, he's a liar. And uh, it's just a taken, it's just accepted that, that Boris Johnson, if he says something, it may or may not be true. Um, he's uh, extremely incompetent, he doesn't like the work, and uh, he prefers to go out and visit, visit places almost every day, rather than actually get on with what needs doing. He seems to delegate everything and uh, he seems to have difficulty making decisions. And also, he is completely and utterly self-obsessed. Everything is about Boris Johnson. It's all about his career, how he looks, how often he can be on the television and, and in the headlines. And uh, for all of those reasons, I, I, I thought he should never have become Prime Minister and I thought that he would never survive as Prime Minister. And uh, I, I think now, finally, we're, we're, we're within quite a short while of him actually uh, being brought down. Now, during his premiership, he's done so many things wrong, uh, but he's got a very powerful propaganda department in, in number 10. And so whenever he does something wrong, they'll just push out some propaganda. They'll, they'll, they'll distract by talking about something else that has gone right and so on. And when you look back with the, you know, I, mean, I don't need to go through all the things that he's, 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 he's got wrong. Um, and in response to all this, they just say he gets all the big decisions right. And uh, I think what has happened in the past is that it's been surprising, you know, you sort of, you see these things that he's doing that are so bad and you think, why don't people get cross about this? Why don't people aren't shouting about it? You look at, uh, you know, the, the, the problems with COVID and the fact that so many people really almost certainly died unnecessarily because of his dithering. And you look at uh, Brexit, what an utter disaster that is. And you look at all these people going on holiday. I mean, it's just, a, just a, that's just a tiny aspect of it. And, and you can see this enormous cost of living uh, crisis which is coming. It'll all be blamed on other things. It'll all be blamed on 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 the, the pandemic, on uh, supply lines. It'll be blamed on the EU. It'll be blamed on uh, Ukraine. Uh, Johnson has the capacity to blame anything on anything except him, uh, except that of course he'll go to Parliament if he absolutely has to and say uh, and say I, I take absolute responsibility when he doesn't at all. And I think uh, when you look at things like, for example, the, the, the you know the, the the money that was given to uh, to friends and contacts of, of, of senior Tory politicians for PPE. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. People were making millions and millions and millions just because they happened to have the email address or the, the, the phone number of a, a government minister. And likewise with the uh, with the test and trace, I mean, the 37 billion, you know, only apparently half of it was spent, but even so, it's a huge amount of money. And you look at this, these things, and I, I, I kept looking and thinking, well, why aren't people furious about it? Why aren't people on the streets demanding what the hell's going on here? This is our money. But I think the problem is it's too far removed. You know, uh, uh, ordinary people are never going to be in line for a, 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 um, a PPE contract. We're never going to be. And it's always, it's, it's a whole separate section of society around politicians, wealthy businessmen who all know each other and all sorted out between each other. And there's nothing any, any, any man in the street, so to speak, can do anything about it. And so I think people have given, given all these things a pass all along the way. And, and whilst if, uh, for some of us, the idea that Johnson's got away with so much and that there's not been much opposition um, has been puzzling, but but I think something has now profoundly changed. And I think it's over the parties, the party gators we're supposed to call it. I think there you've got offences which every single person in the country can relate to. You know, when those uh, lockdowns were, 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 were in operation, 
every one of us was affected. We couldn't go out, we couldn't meet people, we had to be careful this and careful that, we had to wear masks everywhere. And uh, it applied to everybody. And yet, we now found out over the last few weeks, uh, despite all the attempts to delay and, 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 uh, and so on, we found out that really in Downing Street they were just ignoring it and that Johnson was very much involved in all these breaches. And I think that incenses people. You know, I think, I think we British have a, a, a quite a good sense of fair play. Um, I mean, you see this, for example, in, in, in queues. If somebody jumps a queue, you know, there'll be 10 people behind who would never say boo to a goose normally. or jump out and say, oh, excuse me, there's a queue, there's a queue. People get really cross about unfairness. And if somebody gets an advantage, an unfair advantage, that really annoys people. And so I think when you see all these parties, people are already very, very cross. And then when you see Johnson's response, the dishonesty in his response, the, you know, the flippant way he goes to Parliament and says, I take full responsibility. And within a few sentences, he's making jokes about, about Starmer. And uh, when you saw, for example, how uh, um, that, that, that famous bring your own bottle uh, party where 200 people were invited and he went into the garden of Downing Street with his wife, spent half an hour there and there were all people drinking and, and, and uh, eating all the rest of it. And he came out and told the world, I thought it was a business meeting. I had no idea. When uh, he got his fine for, the, for eating some cake for his birthday celebration, he said he just walked into the room, somebody happened to give him a cake. He, I don't think he even ate the cake. And he and the Chancellor both got a fine. Simon Case, the, uh, 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 his uh, Cabinet Secretary, he was there, he didn't get a fine. And then all these other, these other parties that went on, uh, where, where we've seen photographs now of him uh, toasting everybody and giving speeches and all the rest of it, no fines for him. Endless fines for other people, juniors. And people can see the unfairness of this. It's just cheating, it's nasty, it's dishonest. If he's cheating them, he could be cheating... If it, sorry, he, 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 yes, if he's cheating them by, by avoiding a fine himself, whereas they're all getting fines, he could be doing the same to us. And people are suddenly beginning to see, I think, or not suddenly, I think they're, they're rapidly seeing the, the fact that this, this, this guy is just a, 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 a nasty piece of work, as, uh, as Eddie Mayer once called him. And I think there's a deep sense of, of unfairness. And I don't think that's going to go away. You know, in the past, these various scandals have come up. You know, there was, there was Owen Patterson and there was Patel getting away with bullying and all the rest of it. People kind of forget it because the, the tabloids, they write about it. And then the next day, they're, 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 you know, there's a the footballer's wife having a, in court or there's Johnny Depp's case or whatever. I mean, it's just it's yesterday's news in five minutes. But this is something that I think people really resent. And I think we saw it yesterday with that booing at, uh, at St Paul's. Uh, I mean, those people in that crowd were not all, they're not all lefties. They're not all people who hate Conservatives. They're much more likely to be traditional sort of English people who want to go out and show their support for the Queen and want to be present at a historic occasion and so on. And to see such a big crowd booing, I think that that, that is a, a, an indication of the, the mood throughout the country. And it, it, it is impossible, it will be impossible for him to survive that. He, he's going to tell the Tories now, the Tory party, he's going to say, look, uh, without me, you, you, you won't win. But I think many, many Tory um, backbenchers are looking at that film yesterday and they're looking at what's been going on and they're listening to their constituencies, uh, constituents and they are beginning to realise that this guy's a loser. He's no longer a winner, he's a loser. The whole country knows, not only the whole country, the whole world knows. I mean, that, that, that video yesterday, of him arriving in St Paul's, that would have gone right around the world. The whole world knows that this guy is in the first place dishonest and that he's very, very unpopular. And I don't see how he can possibly survive that. Now, uh, it's thought that there are already 54 letters in uh, asking for a vote of no confidence. And uh, it seems very, very likely that next week that will be confirmed. And, uh, and I would have thought after yesterday, it's quite likely that a lot more MPs will be putting their their letters in. It's said by some that uh, the, the Tory party is at 359 Tory MPs, so he needs a vote of 180 votes in order to remain in office. Now, supposing 54 have already um, put letters in. It's thought that the 170 odd MPs who have got jobs, whether it's from a cabinet minister right down to a bag carrier, it's thought that all that they're all grateful to, to, to Johnson, they'll vote for him. They won't. This is a secret ballot. 
I, I, I bet there'll be people in that cabinet, especially those who think they might have a chance at the leadership, who will vote against him. And I think it's very, very possible that he will not, he will not win this vote if, it's a, if there is a vote next week. If he does win it and he only just wins it, he's then so weakened. But of course, being Boris Johnson, he's never, ever going to resign. I mean, this is his whole life. And the thought, I, I imagine the thought for him of no longer being in the limelight would be, would be I mean, you know, unthinkable. So he will hang on, he'll hang on, but he's going to be very much weakened. And uh, not only is he weakened, but also if he wins, he's there for another year because there cannot be another another uh, um, challenge, another um, vote of no confidence for, for, for one year. Now, if he does lose, then, of course, there's going to be an election for a new leader. Uh, the way that works, is, as you probably know, is that uh, whoever fancies having a go puts their name in. And then they have various uh, votes and gradually each, each round they eliminate somebody until there are just two, two, two left standing. Last time, as you probably remember, it was uh, Johnson and uh, Jeremy Hunt. And then uh, those names have to be put to the, to the country, they have to, 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 sorry, to the Tory, members of the Tory party throughout the country. And of course, they're all, uh, a lot of them are very right wing and a lot of them are, are, are sort of people getting on. A lot of people, a lot of them will be uh, pro-Brexit and so on. And so they're probably going to be looking for someone, someone right wing anyway. And so whilst, whilst we might all be hoping that if Johnson is replaced, he'll be replaced by some, some, somebody slightly more moderate, somebody more reasonable, it seems quite likely it's going to be uh, more of the same. Um, the thought of one of the favourites who was uh, uh, um, Liz Truss, the thought of her being... Uh, um, Prime Minister, uh, I mean, it's just too, too horrendous to even, even even think about. But there is one other one other thing that Johnson may be considering, and he might he, he might be he, he might be very clever and do, and that is if he were to call a general election, say next week, that would stop the leadership bid. There'd be no point having a leadership bid then. He would then lead the Tories into the general election. Now, if he won it, then he'd be king of the world for, 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 for as long as he wanted to. And he can go on be creating his authority and dictatorship and all the rest of it. If he lost it, he might remain as leader. But if he were to lose, the Labour Party would suddenly pick up the absolute mess that the economy is in. All the things that are going wrong, all things we can see going wrong more and more every day because of Brexit principally, but for other reasons as well. All of that would be blamed on the, the Labour Party. And so Johnson could calculate, OK, we'll, we'll lose an election and uh, we'll let Labour struggle. We'll blame them for everything. And then in three, four years time, they'll be voted out for one reason or another and we'll get back in again. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him doing something like that, because whatever else, he's going to be absolutely desperate to hang on to power because it is, as I said before, it's his absolute life. So we'll see. We'll see what happens next next, next week. So anyway, uh, I, 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 uh, I wanted to read one or two more comments on uh, last week's video. Now, after I started the last two or three videos reading out some comments at the end, um, I, I've had lots and lots and lots of people comment saying uh, they enjoy it, they like it, and they think it's fun. And I heard just one or two who say that it's not, not really fair and I shouldn't make fun of people. Well, my response to that is that nobody has to watch my videos and, and, and nobody has to comment on them. And if people want to comment, then that's fair enough. But I should be... A, I should be allowed to, 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 to respond. And if you do comment on a video, you're making your comment public. And if you can't be bothered to read it properly before you, 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 you write it, uh, um, why shouldn't that be pointed out? And so I do, I do intend to, as long as people keep writing this sort of stuff, I do intend to keep um, uh, uh, commenting at the end or reading them out. Um, but, but the last thing I want to say was I do get quite a lot of comments and I, I think the last video got about 1200 comments. I, I read every single one of them, but as I've said several times before, I, I just don't have the time to, to respond to all of them. It takes me almost a day to read them all. Um, but if I were to start replying, then it, it would take me, you know, take me all week. So, so I'm sorry that I don't reply and I'm very grateful. Some people write some really, really nice, really interesting, really helpful comments, but, uh, and, and, and I hope you will continue to do so.
So anyway, here's a flavour of some of the, the some of the wisdom that we uh, we learnt last week. Someone called not environmental. He's a bit lofty, interesting, a little biased, and no need for the insults. But Johnson is a clown, and dangerous for your democracy. Ease up on poor spelling. Educational is not what it once was. Bit odd, actually, sort of telling somebody, be careful with the spelling, then spell the next word wrongly. This is someone called Stevie H. He's also a bit lofty. Flawed, borderline libelous, and in part, factually inaccurate. You can't complain we left the EU, and in the same breath claim that there are no checks whatsoever. Well, Stevie, that's exactly what I said. We left the EU. I'm not arguing with that. It's a fact. And there are no checks whatsoever on goods coming into the UK. We all know that. The whole point of the single market was that there were no checks, correct? That continued for 30 years. Yes, at least. And of course, there are checks. Yeah, checks are going out. You tried taking anything into, into Europe from the UK. There are checks, huge checks. Come back in, no problem. We need to be realistic. I agree with that. Of course, smuggling has been prevented. Drugs have been seized. Illegal immigrants have been found. So it's all right. See, see, where does he get this information from? Where do you get your information from, Stevie? Phil Cooper. And what are you, divine? Leaders must be leaders, not saints. You don't deal with Putin, Xi, Hitler or Stalin by being nice, but strong. I would rather trust the devil than a saint. History teaches that. I think what he means to say is I would rather trust the devil than a saint. History teaches us that. You see, it takes a second to reread it and, and correct it. Now, uh, the devil is some sort of fictitious character. And saints, well, they're not really made saints until they die, do they? So you would rather trust the devil than a saint. And you're telling us that history teaches us that. Where, 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 where does it teach that, Phil? Where, where does it teach us that? Ben Trim. At the time, doctors and nurses were wearing bin bags. This was a genuine emergency. Equipment was needed yesterday. Were mistakes made? Absolutely. Old Boris has admitted as much. Old Boris, he must be a mate of his. Would those uh, hindsight idiots on the opposite bench have done things differently? No. They actually voted for all, in capitals, the decisions made at the time. You are changing facts and history. Try to grow up a bit. It will help you see more clearly. You see, he thinks that all of the opposition benches voted in favour of all those crooked contracts going to friends of... of, of uh, because they voted for everything. All those crooked contracts going to friends of uh, ministers and so on. And they all voted for 37 billion for test and trace. They all voted for everything, in fact, it seems. This is someone called Yuri Lilko. Boris Johnson is the best Prime Minister you and the UK have had for a very long time. He got, th he, he got you through Brexit with a win. Through Covid with a win. Is helping Ukraine to win. And now he's helped his people. One small error, I'm not sure which error that is, and you treat him like this. You British, be regretful. I don't know where he's from. Oh, and here's our friend Ben Trem again, the one who wrote about all the uh, about the opposition voting for everything. It appears that France and Germany are satellite Russian states, you know, just like Chechnya and places like that, I suppose. I voted to stay. I'm now glad we left. Europe stinks. And frankly, I don't like the smell. You are happy to breathe it in deeply. Good luck. And maybe you should start learning Russian. Oh, fair enough. Now, this is an interesting one. This is from a, a, a gentleman. Um, the name of his channel is uh, Les Remparts or Les Remparts, which is uh, French for walls. He's a man called Philip Robinson. I looked him up. He's got his own channel. Um, he's called Philip Robinson and he's um, doing up a house somewhere in France. And he has posted on his channel 78 videos over six years. He's got uh, nine subscribers. He says to me, you have hardly any subscribers, which I would say is a consequence of very, very poor content. Too much stuff about personalities and cynicism. 
See, I've got so few, few, few subscribers. He's got nine. Later on, he came back the next day. Don't you have anything to contribute in terms of policy rather than attacking the personality of individuals? Pathetic. Graham B. He, he, I think he must be a subscriber because he comments almost every, every time, actually, these days. He says, you're not still going on about Brexit. Get a life. Move on, you people. Mark Williams says, uh, Michael, there is never any justification for being rude about people. Lots of rudeness in here, uh, Mark. And, and can I not be rude about Adolf Hitler? Can I not be rude about all those Russian soldiers and what they're doing in Ukraine? Can't be rude about anyone. No justification ever for being rude about people. The British government is not renegotiating the withdrawal agreement, nor is the British government rewriting the protocol. Perhaps do some research next time. Well, Mark, um, I never said that the British government was renegotiating the withdrawal agreement because they're not. Uh, uh, they'd like to, because uh, as soon as Lord Gormless had uh, signed it and Johnson had signed it, they decided they didn't like it and they want to renegotiate it, but the EU's having nothing of it. Likewise, the protocol. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, Truss has uh, issued them with an ultimatum, the EU, that if they don't renegotiate the protocol, she is going to introduce legislation to override it. This is somebody called Bin Binji. I think your comments are the reason we are all about to have our freedom of speech curtailed. And I'm awfully sorry about that. If, if everyone, everyone's uh, freedom of speech is going to be curtailed because of me, I never intended that. Kindly edit your distasteful, hate-filled comments about UK citizens and apologise. To put any credence to those unverified comments, that's presumably the comments I read out last week, suggest a deep-seated class bigotry, which perhaps is sailing extremely close to the definition of hate crime, in inverted commas. Imagine if your children was to read such bile. That's a uh, big binge. This is uh, someone called James Avenel. Now, he actually commented last week as well. So he's obviously f following and uh, he's, he's watching the videos, despite the fact that he doesn't really like them or approve of them. He says, uh, can you blokes out there ask your fascist spokesman, that's me, fascist spokesman, what his alternatives are, please? Because we can all criticise but do we have a complete authentic answer when we consider that the entire UK establishment, which includes that mafia at Buck House, I think that's the royal family, who are rabidly anti-general public, controls our entire political spectrum, you know it makes sense. No, it doesn't actually. That, that doesn't make any sense at all. Complete, utter garbage. This is a strange one from a lady called Catherine Carrington. Now, she wrote a second one a bit later on, which was about 100, 100, 150 words long, I would have thought. Quite a long one. Now, Catherine doesn't use punctuation. I think she's saving wear and tear on her keyboard, but she doesn't use any punctuation at all. So it's a bit difficult to read, especially 150 words. I'm not going to trouble you with that one, but this is a shorter one she she, she posted earlier. And, and if you can make any, make this out, please please let me know what you think it means. College Boris Johnson's colleagues in government, Boris Johnson Morrison's colleague, the work within government, Catherine Carrington, that's her colleague. Might send that down to uh, GCHQ and see if they can work it out. Roy Clark. The EU is a protectionist, inward looking mafia type of institution. Not really, Roy, is it? I mean, the Mafia are Sicilian gangsters. I mean, they they kidnap people, they murder them, they deal in drugs and extortion. They're not really the EU, is it? I mean, if you're going to come up with some sort of simile, I think you should try a little bit harder. He comes back, he's got a second one. He says, we have a huge market. It's called the rest of the world. Makes the EU look like the USSR. Mm -hmm. Try and go... Try going to sell to them. Sandra Brown says, uh, he did a good job in very unusual circumstances. You could not have done any better. Nobody perfect. Do some good in the world you're with, with your time. She doesn't use punctuation either. 
Um, John Crawford, are you talking about yourself? Just maybe. Let's be honest, you hate him. I don't really hate him. I think I kind of despise him, actually. I have a lot of contempt for him, but I don't, if we talk about Boris Johnson, I don't really hate him. I think that's a bit of a strong word. And then in the, in the last day or so, a gentleman by the name of Bob Terry has said, uh, nothing of worthy of note here, only trivia. The Tories will win the next general election led by Johnson, who, like it or not, is hugely popular outside the Westminster bubble. Oh, he wasn't very popular at St Paul's yesterday, was he? I don't think many of those people are people who uh, think he got all the right calls right and uh, want him to, 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 to lead us in our difficult times ahead. Somebody else called uh, FTSE trader Steve. Best PM we've had in 50 years. Philip Good. Another load of codswallop, codswallop from someone who does not know what he's talking about. And finally, this is from somebody who calls themselves R Sounds Electric. And this is really delusion in spades. Boris is a winner. Fastest vaccine rollout in Europe. First G7 country out of lockdown. Brexit promised and delivered. Fastest leader to offer military defence of Ukraine. Sign UK military alliance in Sweden and Finland ahead of NATO membership. Rwanda deterrent already working. He immediately paid his £50 fine. You see, that's it. He paid his fine. So, you know, immediately paid his £50 fine for eating a slice of birthday cake. He's still a winner. I think I beg to differ there, uh, whoever you are. Our, our sounds electric. Anyhow, that's all I'm going to say for today. If you've watched this far, thank you very much for, uh, for that. And if you haven't already subscribed, once again, if you, if you wouldn't mind doing so, I, I really would appreciate it. And if you don't mind hitting the like button as well, I'd be, I'd be very grateful. And so until next time, and uh, oh, it'll be in a few days' time or by next week, by which time we may well have uh, be on the way to having a new Prime Minister. But until then, bye for now.